Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And um, I'm not sure why this didn't update all the way. Through. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> and we had we've seen quite the big move here, obviously in equities. Uh, bit of a surprise here because it jumped so high. Uh, I mean, to the extent that it went, but um, we're going to quickly move in there. We're still holding up rather well, but I showed these charts in here, the, you know, on the NASDAQ key area right here, the 89.31, which we challenged it. We dipped below, we challenged it back again, dipped below, challenged it, dipped even further just just uh, the last uh, half hour. Um, and we can go on a little bit closer here. So we've had um, some decent little pullbacks, but overall it's holding up. Um, Certainly here on the five minute, we've seen this market hang on, but uh, once again, we saw that big jump in Asia and then pair back and still holding up relatively high because as we come into the weekend, um, the market's still going to go in and try and hang on up into these levels. And that's going to be the key. Taking a look at here where we are on the spruce. I shared also the weekly chart as well as a two hour chart. And you can see the significance here. I mentioned the 2889, I think we made it up to 2887. Um, obviously this is a key area here. I showed this in the in the uh, chat room as well as uh, on Twitter um, when we were um, opening up here in Asia where this market could potentially go to because we were looking at these big moves and we had not only Netflix and Amazon hitting all time uh, highs on at least for sure on Netflix as well as Amazon. But then we had Gilead with its uh, uh, medication uh, Remdesivir and uh, University of Chicago Hospital had shown a lot of promising results of, of um, coronavirus patients being released within a week. And so that also, that really kicked things off which would then be a pretty big game changer. But also then Boeing announced they began construction on the uh, re, uh, uh, re, um, go back to um, uh, production uh, next week. We, and then of course Trump was coming out with this, trying to open up uh, the country as soon as possible. All those things came into a, a confluence of we uh, so I was going to say resume, resume production uh, came into a confluence of really snapping this market higher and jump. Boy, did we jump because the market already kind of bounced back and forth yesterday, or actually for the last couple of days, and then we came back and it was open to push higher, and push higher it did. But boy, did it really start to take off. But there are some key areas here. Once again, I'd mentioned in the uh, in the chat room in Asia too. Someone was asking me, I go, well, as long as it doesn't get above 2889 and I said we'll get above 2889 and hold because then that would take us to which I think the market would run out of gas uh, which would be 2921. The way I looked at it was we had already blown a lot of people out so they were gone so it would be a matter of where would people who got long where would they be looking to take profits and so that's what I'm saying. Uh, initially, we looked at 2868. The market paused before there and reasserted itself. Like, if we can get past 2868, then we can make that move. And then I had a 78% at 2880, as well as 161% uh, of a move that we're looking at that projected uh, 2879. We can go and take a look at that. Um, so you can see right here where we. The uh, we made it up here. We actually had the 2878 uh, as a um, I should say 2880 as a um, which is here's that move back, which was when it was happening here. We saw the market uh, make it all the way up in here, and we had 100 percent, 161 percent extension here. So good confluence right in here, and the market kind of kept bouncing around, hanging around here 2882. Obviously, this is on one minute, so it looks more extended. But then we drop back here into 72, rally back up, dropping all the way to 68, rally back up here to 84, and then we saw a pretty good sell-off uh, down here to the 60s until ultimately we came down to 50. So we'll go on and get clean this up. And looking at this on a daily uh, key, if we can hold above 28.54, you can see here we took this dip to 28.50, kind of bounce a little bit off of that. Um, then we move on down to the two R, which is a chart that I'd shared. Um, 
and there's that 61% at 28, 29, 21. I want to get through this so we can clean this up a little bit. Um, and then this area right here is a key level, at least from a previous chart. Uh, previously, when we were up uh, uh, on the way down, um, but you can see here, pretty key area here. We'll see how we close it out. Here's the VWAP for the last most recent low in the market. It's been kind of holding higher, so we, obviously the market has that momentum to push higher. Even though I think it's overdone, we should be lower. To think that if once we get things opened up, if that's the case, um, I think the market's going to be in somewhat a bit of a hurt, but we certainly pushing up on what they believe is going to be positive news. But really the game changer, if it was to be that, and some people are questioning that at this point, is on the Gilead's Remdesivir. Uh, Remdesivir. Um, so we'll see whether that uh, comes about. We'll also go and take a look here at the crude oil market. And boy, this really has come down. Look at this, 1817, which, I mean, some of you, you know, they took some additional action. I saw some headlines, but, you know, I, I've mentioned in the chat room, someone was saying something about the crude oil, and I go, well, crude is the one, you know, I don't think I said honest market, but it's the one that's looking at the market honestly because of demand. And there's just not going to be any demand. It's simply reflecting that, okay? So that's why we continue to uh, move lower here in the crude oil market. Um, now down to the low $18. I mean, holy smokes, I think some people, I think might have been Steve that was looking for $16, and holy smokes, I think we might just get there. Um, and initially, it seemed like that had some impact, um, you know, in equities yesterday, uh, and kept them, you know, really under some pressure. But obviously, they popped back up, and they're basically ignoring what's happening here in crude oil. And uh, obviously, like I said, if that was the case, uh, regarding the uh, Remdesivir with the Gilead, there's something that'd be a game changer would turn things around. The expectation would be, oh, well, then the market could, people could come right back, it would send us back. But once again, like I said, I think the moves in equities uh, have been um, a bit stretched here, but getting back to that um, and trying to look at an overall picture, which is what I did yesterday when I saw these prices jumping up or seen in the after our session, um, I thought to myself, well, where can they go to? And um, that's how I ended up coming up, you know, with these charts, um, looking at as to, okay, what, where can we go to? And, uh, and I pulled up the weekly saying, okay, where do I want to step in at areas I think the market would take some profit? We saw it at 28.68 initially when the market opened. Um, and then the pullback, and then we reassert ourselves. I thought about 28.89, and so if we were to push head at the time, I think we would. But if we had pushed higher, then I was looking to hang on into the shorts in that area, all the way up here to 29.21, because then we'd have also the 61% of this entire range. And so at that point, I'm thinking the people that were short doesn't matter anymore. They're gone for the most part. So the people you'd be looking now is those that got long and say, where can I take some profits? Not that they necessarily jump all the way out, but where would they take profits? And that, that's what I was looking at at uh, 2089 would be key as well as 2921. Uh, but we've come so far off of this. It's been amazing the move that we've seen here. Um, I think the market's rather overdone, but then again, it's coming to a Friday. Um, you know, people are, you know, let's say if you were short and then um, some of y'all did really well as the market was coming down, but if some got, you know, taken out of their, uh, the bounce of the positions, it's not that like they're going to go and say, okay, now I can't wait to short unless they're scalper. Uh, and now I can't wait to short. Um, and now I'm ready to load up going into a weekend. No, they probably say, you know what? I'll step aside now. I'll see what happens. And so that's what I'm thinking. You have to be a little bit careful as we go into the weekend. May try and push back. We're seeing this right now at 2870. We were just a little while ago. Take a look at this. Down here at the 2850s. So look at this move. You see that? And now look how quickly we bounce back. So those are the things you have to take into consideration. Like I said, can still come in, like I said, as a, a scalp. I guess it, to a certain extent with the ranges we're seeing here. A day trader. And really that's just my game as far as just scalping so i look at levels where the market's going to go to some of these moves i don't catch yesterday late i didn't catch i missed a couple of good strong moves because um uh finally 
at least try to break a habit I used to have, which is FOMO chasing the market. But obviously when I do miss a move because I don't do that, then sometimes I'm like, I'm not going to chase it. And that missing to a certain extent that can help out because obviously yesterday, um, if I were to chase it, could have put myself in a bad position, but there were some good moves yesterday that some people profited very nicely from. Uh, I was, I mean, I had an okay day. It was a decent morning, but once again, um, you know, we kept pressuring the lows here, pressuring the lows. Before we came back, and I think we, um, when I announced about the um, um, opening up, I think at the time the market was at 27.59, and we did see a nice little bounce back then. It just kept furthering itself, furthering itself. Then with the news coming out with Gilead, and then the market really just started taking off, right? basically as the futures closed. So with that being said, uh, let's go on and uh, that kind of gives us an overview of where we're at right now. Uh, so with that being said, let's go on and move into the news. Um, actually, we'll take a look at the economic calendar. And thank God it's Friday. It's going to be nice to wrap up the week and have a restful weekend. So at the top of the hour, we do have um, Eurozone HICP. Uh, then uh, let's see as we move in. Right. That's it. what I see. Okay, let's go move into the news. So the Australian New Zealand dollar swing higher and bond market soaks up record sales. The Australian New Zealand dollars were trying to end a, end a turbulent week on a firmer note on Friday as risk sentiment returned while the bond market absorbed a record government borrowing with a plum. The Aussie had rebounded to 63.70, having slipped as far as 62.64 on Thursday. The Kiwi bounced um, eight tenths to 60.20 and away from a low of 59.98. The risk sentiment had got a boost overnight from a report of an experimental drug that had shown encouraging results in treating COVID-19 patients, though all the data had yet to be analyzed. Also helping the data confirming China's recovery a, uh, contracted sharply in the first quarter as it went into coronavirus lockdown, but looked to have improved in March. Sean Callow, FX strategist at Westpac, said the Aussie had rallied farther than he had expected, but suspected it would be dragged back toward the 60 cent level by a wave of brutal economic data in the coming weeks. Over the past month, the U.S. equities and the Aussie dollar have carved out a V-shape that seems to match investor hopes that the global economy's deep decline in Q2 will be followed by a sharp recovery. But even with the glimmers of hope in slowing coronavirus infection rates, genuine recovery in economic activity, employment, and profits is looking more like a hockey stick. The Reserve Bank of Australia will offer its latest take on the outlook next week when Governor Philip Lowe gives a speech and a conference call on the economy. The central bank should be pleased with how its new quantitative easing campaign has gone so far, managing to keep three-year bond yields down near its target of a quarter basis point, even while sharply scaling back the amount of deficit uh, debt buys, debt buys, having started in late March by purchasing five billion Aussie a day. On Friday, it was just $750 million of debt. Uh, that was all the more impressive, given the Australian government's borrowing massive amounts of cash with a record $13 billion of a new 2024 bond sold on Wednesday. And the dollar steadies as overnight sentiment boost eases off. The dollar steadied in early London trade on Friday after its rally was cut short by an overnight boost to the risk sentiment from news of apparent success in COVID-19 treatment of a drug trial and early plans to reopen the U.S. economy. The dollar, which was closely tracked uh, risk sentiment through the coronavirus case crisis, was broadly flat against the basket of currencies. But there were signs of risk appetite as the safe haven Japanese yen was down two tenths and the riskier New Zealand dollar rose seven tenths. The euro was broadly flat against the dollar at 0840. Sentiment was boosted overnight by a media report detailing encouraging uh, partial data from experimental drug trials on severe COVID patients at the University of Chicago. More data is expected at the end of the month. 
news of Trump's uh, plans to reopen the world's largest economy was taken by investors as a positive sign, even after Thursday's jobless data showed a record 22 million Americans sought unemployment benefits in the last month. The overnight moves top of the dollar, which was closely tracked with risk sentiment through the coronavirus from a week high. Though the greenback is headed for its smallest a uh, weekly rise in almost two months. The dollar is likely to be supported in the shorter term as any vaccine will take months to come to market while the economic cost from month long lockdown by the global economy is going to be huge. Although there are some signs of recovery this morning, I still have my doubts that this will be proved sustainable, said Commerce Bank FX strategist Lao Win. Citing poor economic data and market uh, concerns about when new infections are lessening sufficiently justify relaxing lockdown measures. China's economy shrank 6.8% in the first quarter, the first reversal since at least 1992 as the coronavirus outbreak paralyzed production and spending. With that, we'll go on and uh, move into the analysis. So the euro continued its downward slide, taking out the bias chart support of 829 to tag 816. Support on Friday will be 806 with resistance at 894. Onto cable. Now, cable took a further step back on Thursday, finding support at 24 even level. Uh, support on Friday is going to be 23.51 with resistance at 25.51. So, we'll get a little bit of broader range, but lower nonetheless. And on to Aussie. Now the Aussie finished the day with a mini hammer. You can see that right here. Uh, the pair has resistance at weekly level 6397. Looks like that's better. They ran out of gas. They got up as high as 6397. 87, so 10 pips away. The pair's resistance at weekly level 6397 was supported 6288. So Onto the Kiwi. The Kiwi came off the lows, coming right into bias chart support of 59.14. Resistance on Friday will be 60.43, with support at 59.54. Well, we're just about there right now. Low is 59.61, so 59.54. And resistance uh, So the dollar cad formed a small gravestone doji. The pair uh, pullback will find support at 39.63 with resistance at 
a little bit of a wide range here, but 39.63 and 41.12. The dollar peso formed a textbook gravestone doji, closing at 24 even. The pair has the opportunity to challenge 23.35 with initial support at 23.60. It just made it almost there. Resistance will be 24.24. The dollar yen came off the lows, challenging 778. Resistance for Thursday, I don't know. Oh, that's right. For whatever reason, this didn't, um, didn't update from here. Okay, so what we're looking at, we did come off those lows. We added on further fuel to that. Uh, looking at resistance right now, it's going to be this lower bar here. You see that? And that comes in uh, 821. Support, we're going to try middle of the road it. You see here, coming across here, that has some good touches of cut right here, almost right there. So it's going to be 738 for support. And on to the dollar or dollar index, I should say. Well, the dollar index pushed a bit past the bias chart resistance of par 20. But the market feels a bit stretched. Resistance will be par 14. We're actually a little bit higher above that. We're actually up to par 22 right at part 25 with support at 99.34 so well, we'll stick to what the analysis says so we're going to go part 14 well, now we're part 25 yesterday was part 20 and support 99.34 Always a bit tricky on a Friday um, as people just try and get out of the way. So anybody that was short the dollar, they're feeling the pain. You get those Friday flows, you can start pushing higher. And so we've had a good turnaround We're on the third straight day. So you probably might see even a little bit further, but we shall see. Let's go and move on to the cross rates. Well, we saw that dip. We talked about that. Look how it's been just down, down, down. Um, and we kind of saw a little bit of a stabilization yesterday with a little mini hammer, which would suggest we get a little bit of short covering. Uh, and we'll look right across here. You can see where the most touches are. Right there, and actually just about where the high is. The high took it out, but this is a little bit higher than where it was. So it's going to be 64.96. Oh, we had 95. Keep it there. Support, you would think that would be uh, on any dips back. Same thing. Let's see if we can get the most touches coming right across there, which is going to be. 
Um, let's go move on to the Euro again. Well, this is continuing to remain under pressure. And we've even gone past the 1704 now. Um, how much will be able to push it? I don't know. I don't think he's going to, the wheels are going to come off the caboose or anything like that. So we'll look, you see right here, right there. And now it's coming almost at the, the, the prior low. So I like that 1644. We have a little bit pressure because we are below that, um, key level you can see here the 1704 resistance we'll put it right there you see that bar there it's gonna be right there 1719 let's go into the euro on Well, we fell back to the big weekly level right here, uh, and I would still expect that to hold. 170, so uh, let's just keep it right there, 70 even. On the upside, Mm, that would be resistance. It's that low right there, which would be 7186. Right here, that low there, which is going to be eighty sixteen. And on the upside, well, you can see here where they went ran to, it, and it's actually the other side of this Greystone Doji. So resistance is going to be eighty one eighty. And let's go and move on to the ASEAN. Well, we've rebounded just above that resistance is 68.69. But we have paired back as Aussie's weakened. Um, you can see here. This low here is going to be resistance. So at this point, we're looking at 68.50. And support. This is actually not bad, right? Right in there. So we'll just take it right there. 68, let's, actually, let's call it 
Now let's go on to the guppy. Pretty clear with the resistances, which is 68.75. Something else, yeah, I'm going to hit the guppy. Hold on. There we go. You can see this level coming right across here. And that's Looking for a break a little bit lower potentially. So 3357. And lastly, we're starting on. <clears throat> Same thing. I just, we're holding up well. You actually have a look at this. You see here, we came down here, rally up, we fall back, we're holding this area, you see here? And then on top of that, we have a little mini hammer. It looks positive. Uh, you know, if you were playing on a shorter term basis, I mean, you'd have to say, look, they came back, they held here. You see, this is key here. And they held it and held it up with the hammer. So the push would be higher, um, but we're going into Friday. If we were to push up this spot as good as it gets, which would be 97, 92. That's a pretty good little run. We'll split the difference right there. Call it 97.64. We may not see that come to fruition until as we start the beginning of next week. Uh, risk is still, I mean, we got the hammer pushing up, but don't forget we had this, this pressure going down here, kind of push it, but it still looks like it's good enough to push higher here. Um, support is going to be right there. 95.89 needs to hold that, 95.89. And there we go. Take a look at equities. You're just kind of be bopping around. You saw that we came off the 28.50. We ran up to 28.71. Now we basically split the difference, and here we are halfway down. Um, like I said, You know, we're into, uh, we're at the end of the week. Um, anybody who got stopped out, it's not like as if I think these are good value areas up here. Uh, like I said, they mentioned in the chat room, someone said, you know, what do you think about that? You mentioned it. Do you think you'll make it to that 2889? I said, well, I think so, um, which we did make it up to, I think it's 2887. Um, but I said, the problem is if we get above 2889 and we hold, then it was th the next area would be the 2921 but i think that's a good it's a good area uh but it's friday so how many people are going to be enthusiastic to go and hold into the weekend although i think this is way overdone i mean way overdone but the only thing that i think one can hang their hat on which was um we did a lot of work the last couple of days down in here you see that we did a lot of work uh, i think dominic did well trading down here and covering part of his position, come back up, covering it again. Uh, you see this whole area. That's why it was open. So when 
I saw this market take off uh, really after the futures in a sense it's closed uh, or the main stock market closed. I said, where can we go? And, you know, one could have said, oh, it's probably going to be 2840 or blah, blah, blah. I thought, you know what? We did some pretty good work down here. You see here, here. So I said, this market can, if it's going to move higher and the resistance level was 2809, it's going to go past that. It's probably going to go past this level here. And that's why I was looking at the time. My, my look-see was for 2868. And then we did get the thing. I took a scalp of 2865 card at like 2859 or something like that. And then I got out of it because I said, you know, I want to see if we can get past 68, which we did. And we started pushing higher. Uh, initially, the market ran into trouble around the mid 70s. No, no. Yeah, right at higher 70s. And we did back, but eventually we got above the 80. So I just think that you have to let the market do what it wants to do for today. If you want to try and scalp in here, but if you've had a good week, I don't think you have to go and put yourself in harm's way. That's why I was trying to make the money I could in Asia. And then I'll see what happens today. My Fridays are kind of a little bit tricky. But um, then we'll swing back to crude oil. This is unbelievable. Look at that. Unfreaking believable. Let's take a look here, June. Oh, wow. June's 25. Holy smokes. But May is 1827. Should be rolling into June, I guess, by tomorrow. Or well, not tomorrow, but on Monday. That should be the front month contract. Anyway, that's what we have for today. Good luck, and we'll see you in the chat room. Thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar.